My name is William Michael. I'm the headmaster of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And in this video, I'm going to walk students through all of lesson one in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy's Intro to Classical Arithmetic course. This course is intended to serve as a bridge between modern mathematics courses and the classical mathematics courses studied in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. In this first lesson, we're going to study, as you can see here, the title of chapter one uh, is General Definitions. So we're going to study some general definitions that introduce us to the, uh, the science of arithmetic. And these definitions should be memorized. These definitions will provide for us the meanings of terms that we're going to be using throughout this study. And anytime we see these terms, we need to remind ourselves of the definitions that were established at the beginning of this course. So these definitions need to be memorized for you to, to master this first lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with our definitions. We'll begin with the first definition, which answers the question, what is mathematics? What is mathematics? The answer is mathematics is the doctrine of quantity. Mathematics, and I'll underline this because that's the subject of definition one. Mathematics is the doctrine or science of quantity. Now you'll notice that this spelling is a little strange. Mathematics uh, in modern times does not have a K in it. But the reason why the spelling is different is because this book was originally published in the year 1735. 1735, that's almost 300 years ago. This book was published before America was even a nation. So this is an old book written by an Anglican priest or rector named John Kirkby. And it was intended to pass down the principles of classical arithmetic to Christian students. So some spelling may be different and some words may be used differently than they're used in modern society, but I'll make sure to point those things out and clear them up when we see them in our studies. But definition number one is mathematics is the doctrine of quantity. Our second definition is a definition of quantity. If we ask the question, what is quantity? Quantity is whatever is the subject of estimation or computation. Quantity is whatever is the subject of estimation or valuing things or computation. That's our second definition to be memorized. Computation here is defined in definition number three. We learn that computation is the action of the mind. So computation is something that happens naturally in men and women. We naturally perform the action of computation. It's something natural to us. It's not something that we learn to do in school. It's something that we do naturally. Computation is that action of the mind whereby things are referred to unity. And I'll explain what this means. Computation is that action of the mind whereby things are referred to unity. So if you were to walk into your bedroom or let's say your dining room and on the dining room table, <clears throat> there was a pile of uh, let's let's say a pile of tomatoes and you were to look at that pile and you were to say there are seven tomatoes on the table how would you know what to count why would you say seven 
How would you figure out that there are seven tomatoes? The answer is that you would be able to know what one tomato is, and then you would compute, your mind would perform this action of computation. You would look at that pile of tomatoes and you would refer those things to unity, to one tomato. And then you would compute that there are seven of those things in that pile. This is something that your mind does naturally. When it sees a multitude of things, your mind seeks to figure out what this multitude is based on, what can be called one, and then it seeks to know how many of those things are in that multitude. This is the action of computation. We could call it counting. Counting is, is the same thing. But what I want you to notice is there's something going on in your mind when you count things. First, you have to figure out what one of the things is, and then you count or compute how many of those things are in that multitude. Computation is the action of the mind whereby things, a number of things, are referred to unity. And we'll see what unity means in this next definition, definition four. If we were to ask, what is unity? Unity is that whereby everything is considered as one. Unity is that whereby everything is considered as one. So if we think about that multitude or pile of tomatoes, if we were to look at that multitude, our minds tell us that this is a multitude that has something in common. And if we ask, what is it that these things have in common? We can say they're all different, they're all different versions of a tomato. And then we compute how many there are. When we get this idea of one tomato, what we're doing is we're determining what unity is in this multitude of things on the table. We look at the multitude and we ask, what is this multitude made up of? What is the one thing that this multitude is made up of? And that one thing is unity. And that's true in anything that we, that we compute. Unity is that whereby everything is considered as one. So anytime that you call something one, you're identifying unity. And then that unity will be used to compute the number of units in a multitude or in a group of things. So definition four teaches us that unity is that whereby everything is considered as one. Definition number five. The same units, that's the subject of this fifth definition, same units are such as are apprehended or understood under the same notion. That is, they, they are considered units, but they are the same idea of units. For example, if we had a bushel of corn, a bushel is a big basket. It, it contains, um, if you think of a big bag of dog food, if you live in, in a suburb or a city, you may have seen a big bag of dog food. That's likely a bushel bag. If you live in the country, you may have seen a bushel of corn, a big, a big uh, bag of grain. But if we were to talk about how many gallons are in a bushel of corn, every gallon would be the same. So when we say one gallon, two gallon, three gallon, every one of those units is the same. And these are same units, okay? Same units are units that are apprehended under the same notion as the gallons in a bushel of corn or the yards in a web of cloth. If there are three yards,